Section 10.2, uh, finite geometric series. So we're going to take that geometric sequence, an equals a times r to the n minus 1, and we're going to convert it to a series by finding the sum of these terms. So let's find a shortcut formula, and then we'll do some examples. So we don't always want to add 20 terms because it takes a while. So we're going to find a shortcut formula. So I'm going to derive it, and then you can just jump to it. So S sub n would be a for the first term plus a times r plus a times r squared all the way up to a times r to the n minus 1. Right, just finding each individual term and finding the sum. So the trick to finding the formula is we're going to multiply by r. So a times r is a r. a r times r is a r squared. So just basically adding an r to all the terms. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is subtract this. So all of these become negative when I subtract. So we're going to do s sub n minus r times s sub n. And then equals, um, we get a. And then I notice a and a r cancel out. a r and a r. a r squared cancels out. Right, everything will cancel out in the middle. And we'll only be left with the first term and the last term. So we'll get minus a times r to the n, because we were subtracting. And we're just trying to find the sum. So we factor out s sub n, which is the sum. So we get the sum times 1 minus r, and we can just divide by 1 minus r. Um, and now we have a shortcut formula. So I was just showing you how to get it. You don't have to derive it ever again. But now you can trust me on where it came from. So the sum of the first n terms, s sub n, and this is for geometric. There's a different formula for arithmetic. And then if it's neither of these, then we just have to add. But these are shortcut formulas for these patterns. We'll say it equals, and I'm going to factor out a, so a times 1 minus r to the n, all over 1 minus r. So this will be our special shortcut formula for geometric. So let's just try two examples. Again, make sure it's geometric before you use this formula. Otherwise, um, maybe it's arithmetic or maybe it's neither. So example six is geometric because we have three times two to the k minus one, right? So we have, we fit this pattern. We have a common ratio of r and our a is three. So a equals three and r equals two. And we want to find the sum of the first eight terms. So, right, option one is you plug in all these numbers and add them up. Right, but you have to do this until you get to the eighth term. And I don't really want to do that. And so that's why we have this nice shortcut formula. So the sum of the first eight terms, right, eight for eight terms, will be a, which is the first term, and then it'll be 1 minus r, just using the formula, so 2 to the 8th power all over 1 minus 2. And so that's how we can find the sum of the first 8 terms without actually doing it. So let's see, we get 3 and then 2 to the 8th I think is 256. So 1 minus 256 over 1 minus 2. So we get 3, negative 255 over negative 1. So 3 times 255, I think you'll get 765. And so again, that's the sum of the first eight terms. All right, let's try one final one. Um, example 7, we want to find the sum of 3 plus 3 halves, plus 3 fourths, 3 eighths, 3 sixteenths, and 3 over 32. Um, I could add them up, but I don't want to deal with finding LCD and all that, so we can use this new formula. So this is geometric because we have a common ratio. So every time I'm multiplying by one half, right? Three times one half is three halves, times one half is three fourths. Um, you can also do that divide to find the common ratio. Threes cancel out and you get one half. So my A is three for first term and um, my r is one half for the common ratio. 
And we're just trying to find the sum of one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So we want S sub six for six terms. So it'll be A times one minus R to the sixth over one minus R. And we found the first term and we found the ratio. So we can just plug in without actually adding these numbers up. And so A is three and we get one minus one half to the sixth power over one minus one half. Um, let's see, what's one half to the six? That would be uh, 64, one over 64, over one minus one half. Um, so s let's see, we get three, we would get 63 over 64, because one minus would just be 63 left over, over one half. Um, I would multiply by two just to get rid of the fraction in the fraction. So we get three times 63 over 64 times two. So we can do this a little bit without a calculator, get some practice. Um, so we get one over 32, and then I don't know what's three times 63, that we might have to use a calculator. I think I get 189 over 32. And we're going to leave it as a fraction. Um, and that's it. So we can check our work. So three plus three halves plus three fourths plus three eighths plus three over 16 plus three over 32. And then let's see if 189 over 32 is the same thing. Yep. So two different ways of finding the sum, but we like fractions. So um, this shortcut formula was a little easier because finding LCD would have been a hassle for this. Um, and that's it. So make sure you let me know if you have questions. Um, the main idea is a sequence is a list of numbers and a series is finding the sum of those numbers. So make sure you know the difference between the two. So a sequence in 10-1 was a list and a series in 10-2 is actually finding a sum of these numbers.